Hey everybody, we're doing something a little bit different tonight. We're going to be showing how to properly share your logic projects over Zoom. This is something that I do quite a bit in my classes that I teach, but I wanted to show some of the things I found and how to, at least with one uh, scenario, make this all work. So inside logic, let me show you my audio preferences first. I have what's called a multi-output device. And I like this because it means I can get fairly low latency. So I'll show you how to set that up in a second. Use the OS X Audio MIDI setup. My input device is the uh, my just normal small interface for this. And I can change my buffer size around a little bit. Um, but this is a lot less uh, latency than I would get if I was using, for instance, the Zoom audio driver. So there's one thing to be said for it. But I can still send this directly into Zoom. So one of the other steps I need to do right off the bat, let's get this loaded up in here. Audio MIDI setup. Under the audio area, what I did was create a new multi-output device. What this does is it means that it's going to send a copy of the audio out each of those uh, separate devices. Um, it really prefers, uh, Zoom really prefers 48 kilohertz, but the project that I'm going to be showing you is in 44.1, and this does seem to work okay when I'm doing it this way. It's not perfect, but it definitely seems to work. 48 is the desired sample rate, and now for any projects I'm doing with Zoom, I tend to start them in 48 but I choose both devices, the Steinberg, so I can hear what's going on. And then I use the Black Hole 16 channel audio driver. This is a free download. Just do a search for Black Hole audio driver and you can download that and install it. And it's kind of like for any of those you remember Soundflower it works like that. It's an internal routing tool that you can go between different applications. So I have that set up right here. I choose that as my output in Logic and uh, right now, you're hearing this all through Zoom. So what I'm doing right now is recording this video through Zoom, and I'm using the that particular thing. Now, you can't actually see this. I'm going to have to put this up on the screen as a screen grab. And so now, I have the microphone in Zoom set to uh, the black hole driver. Inside Zoom, I need to make the other setting adjustments as well. And that's under the Advanced tab. So you can actually see what that looks like. I have the Stereo Audio Enabled, High Fidelity Enabled, Disable Echo. And so all of those now make it so that you have a higher quality experience in the recording and when you're sharing this. So just to recap, Logic is set to the multi-output device for my output. The input in Zoom for the microphone is set to the black hole driver, and I have all of the high quality settings turned on. Now, um, when I'm inside Logic, I can relatively easily play. And that's actually pretty responsive. Uh, it may be slightly better without all of this stuff together. Um, but it's very responsive, even with the session loaded up with plugins and things in there. Um, we could, I think because part of Logic right now is set up uh, to handle any effects and things that would add latency with its uh, plugin compensation, um, we could turn on low latency mode. See if anything gets turned off. Yeah, so there's a number of things. And now it's very responsive. And so I could actually be playing a song or recording inside Logic while I'm streaming this to students or making a recording like this. And um, I think that that's one of the best things is I can have my piano just turned on if I'm doing a musical example with students. I can do all of that in real time without having any of the delay that comes um, from using the Zoom audio driver. And I don't have to use any other workarounds besides the black hole driver. Um, because once that's in place, I don't have to reset it up or anything. I don't have to have students log into a website to hear my audio in another way. I don't have to 
do very many things, I can have very good uh, response time on my MIDI or input or even recording audio, and they can hear all of that real time. So I just wanted to showcase this little process. Um, let me play a little bit of the song so you can hear the quality of the new Zoom drivers. I turn around and see the tears upon your face. They fall from eye to chin and then to the sun is always spinning round and round from the ground from the ground the sun is always spinning round any issues we have at this point are just from the session overloading the buffer size uh, when zoom is also doing all this other work so it helps to really be careful. In this case, I need to select my drummer track so that it's not expecting a live input anymore. So you want to be careful of what things are selected when you're playing back. Uh, especially on a, a processor like this with just the four cores. Anyway, this demonstrates the whole process and showcases how we do this. You're hearing my voice through Logic. I actually have a mic input set up. This is actually really useful as well when teaching because then it's really easy when people are listening to me and they say, well, what's a delay? And I can come in and say, you know, here's um, a stereo delay. Check, 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 check. And now you're hearing that. I can put a compressor on my voice and show them. All of this stuff I can really easily put on my voice and they'll hear live over the Zoom call. And it's great for presentations and great for showcasing various things. Plus, I can load up any session I want and have access to all of that and they can see what's happening. Okay, that's all uh, I wanted to showcase with this. I hope this was useful. Um, I'm still learning and doing more with this setup but this was kind of the fundamental part of it.